Hello everyone and I'm back at Lilybrook. Thank goodness. Back to where I know so I stand a better chance of getting a decent score. Although started with a bogey. When I got the tripod out there was the, the little gathering by the first tee sort of like peering across at what I was doing and uh, I got nervous there you know. Doesn't matter what handicap you are you occasionally get nervous. <sighs> anyway Four ball behind me, who haven't teed off yet, so no pushing from the rear. I've got a two ball in front, the third is empty, fourth tee is empty. A relaxing round coming up. So what's today's video about? I don't know, should we make it up as we go along? Lilybrook is a par 69 at 6,212 yards. So it's a short course, right? Well, if you extended three of the par fours to make it a par 72, it'd be well over 6,500. This course is tough. You miss the fairway by a few yards and you're always behind something. So it's pretty difficult here to get down to single figures. In fact, the standard scratch is 71, two over par. This is the first course I've been a member of where the scratch is higher than the par. And we've got two of these par threes which are quite long. It's very rare that I can hit a four iron from the white tees. It's usually the three iron and sometimes it's the five wood. So this is a tough track. I had a chat on the patio the other day with a guy and he'd seen my how to get the single figures video. And he said you make it sound so easy and matter of fact. Well it's not easy. It's damned hard. You need to practice a lot. You need lessons. All right, I'm sure there's people out there who haven't had lessons and they're very proud of the fact that they haven't had lessons. Don't quite understand why. Because when you come out of winter, when you're playing once a week golf in four layers of clothing, your swing isn't exactly where it ought to be. So I always have lessons. Now, uh, sorry, I'm waiting for the bell if they remember. Now, uh, I looked at my WHS and I'm 4.3 and uh, I was looking back at what um, rounds of golf counted towards that 4.3 and I noticed that all of 2019 was missing. We're in a single score from 2019. Now, I missed eight weeks of 2019 with tendonitis from hitting balls off mats, which is why I hate hitting balls off mats. And uh, my handicap went up to eight last summer before I eventually got it back to seven. Now I'm here, it's back to six, Kongu wise, not WHS. I don't know what the WHS is doing. My handicap's up and down like a horse draws. But you know, getting to single figures is hard work. Staying there can be even harder. Well, I haven't heard the bell, so I'm just going to go anyway. bit of payback. So when you get a little bit of a ropey start, you know, bad shot on the first tee box, unlucky shot on the second tee box. 
Well, you just wait for it, don't you? You can't force a good score. You can only wait for it to happen. I'll tell you one thing that's funny. I'd forgotten I had that birdie, because I'm not marking the card. Isn't it until I do the editing that I go, oh my goodness, I had a birdie there. Yeah, so I'm blocking my tee shot on five at the moment, which really means you can't make, you can't make your pars as you ought to. But at least I've missed this on the correct side. And, um, oh well, looks like it's gonna be a bogey anyway. Funny how so much of what we do is influenced by the last round of golf. So in my last competition, I absolutely smoked the three wood down here. Couldn't find my ball, it was in the ditch. So this time I've hit a pop-up slice and I'm miles away from the ditch. So you can see how good the previous three wood and how poor that one was. But that shot was caused by the fantastic shot I hit a few days before in the competition that cost me a bogey. Oh, and that's a flag rattler. That is a flag rattler. Can't be bothered to take the putter. I bet I wouldn't do that in a competition, would you? I haven't been playing number eight very well. It's a par five. I ought to be averaging under par on this hole. But the actual slot that gives you a clear view down the second part of this hole is minuscule. See, I'm on the fairway, I've got no shot. I certainly haven't got a shot after knocking it into the tree. I failed to keep that down. I mean, look at this. This is a par five of 500 yards. And my third shot is a four iron. This is a tough track. This really is not easy at all. Four hundred and sixty seven yards. All right, the tee shot is ever so slightly downhill, and the second shot is very downhill. But it's into the prevailing wind, and yet I find this hole is easier than the par five coming back the other way on my right. How can that be? How can a four hundred and sixty seven yard par four be easier than a par five? And it's simply the width of the fairway. Yeah. As I say, I haven't been practicing my short game. I'm hitting stuff a little bit knifey, a little bit bottom groove instead of uh, with the face of the club. This is the thing with being single figures. You get there by being an excellent chipper. But you can only stay there by continuing to practice your chipping.
12th hole. This is my first go with the three wood this summer. I think the ground's firm enough now for me to be able to reach the corner. If I was to take driver, it might just go too far. Now, I don't know about your course, but Lillybrook has these two par fours, which are incredibly difficult for me to reach. 12 and 15. Okay, I get a shot on them both, and I should play them as par fives, because I've got a shot. But if you're single figures, then you are looking to make pars on holes that you shouldn't really be making pars on. Because to stay down at around about a five or six handicap, I gotta make some pars on even the most difficult holes on the course. 13's next. One of my favorite for making birdies on. Well, 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 finally, at last, I get one in. But this is uh, the hole that I make most of my birdies on. I mean, I've hit, what, three wood sand wedge from the back tee there. And this green, as you can see, it's a bit of a bowl, so it gathers. Now, it's, it's quite funny, so there's a farmer over there with a tractor doing some work. You know, I get asked, you know, how much do you practice? Why do you have lessons? Well, why did Nick Faldo have lessons? Or Dustin Johnson, or Phil Mickelson, or Tiger Woods, or Rory McIlroy? They're professional golfers, they don't need lessons. Well, if they need lessons, and they need to practice, and they need to warm up before they play, then I think I do too. Unfortunately, I haven't practiced my long game in three weeks. I've been far too busy making films, if nothing else. It's funny that I'm making these films to try and show you how to get better at golf and I'm getting worse at golf because of it and I haven't practiced my short game in forever so I get what I get you get out what you put in I'm not putting in so I'm not getting out now um, I'm not going to shout at you but if you're 10 11 12 handicap and you're wanting to get to 8 or 9 you've got to work Really, you got to work at it, unless you're one of those few super talented people who find it easy. And if you did, you wouldn't be off 10, 11 or 12. I don't know what my score is. I think I'm five or perhaps even four over. And I got um, these five holes to go, two of which are quite difficult. So uh, I'm waiting for the bell. They've walked past the bell just like they walked past the bell on the fourth. Anyway, here we go, five more holes. Here's a thought for you. Have you been counting how many holes I hit less than driver on? Well, Lillybrook's a tight course. And there's severe penalties, like I've tugged me five wood and I'm down the bank here. This is an incredibly severe penalty. Now this lands short and jumps up onto the green, so I'm uh, exceptionally happy about that. <laughs> but when you go to a tight golf course, or if your own golf course is tight, how often do you club down from driver to say a three wood, or a five wood, or a hybrid? You know, playing for a par does not always involve Trying to hit your driver as far as you can. It's funny, I'd never do the one-handed thing in a competition. I'd line it up, stand over it, both hands, knees knock. 
when you're just knocking it around in the evening and it doesn't count for anything, you just knock it in one-handed casual as, uh, as anything, don't you? I can't understand it. The course is empty. It's Thursday the 10th of June, just in case you're wondering what day it is and how long ago this was recorded. And um, in eight days I'm loading up the car and I'm off for the weekend. I'm not going to tell you where, you'll have to uh, wait and see. I don't find the drive on 15 particularly difficult. It is a very wide fairway and it does suit my fade. But this shot, ball above the feet and on an upslope, I've missed the green by 40 yards. Now that shot I find incredibly difficult with a long club. If it was a six iron, I'd be just fine. Well, I've played to run this down the bank and I can't believe why it hasn't appeared. See, that was the percentage shot over hitting the floater into the green. But it didn't actually do me any good in this case. And I've just missed out on my par. Yeah, this, this is a tough track. It's not easy. And it's not easy getting to single figures. And that's a biggie. I can't say enough about how much work you've got to put in to shave off a few strokes when you're at the sharp end. But if you want something enough, badly enough, you'll find a way of doing it. And that's all I've done. I wanted to get as low as I possibly could. So I had to put in the effort to get there. Sadly, this one's a bit of a miss. What I was peering at from the tee box was the fact that my ball landed on ground and not in the hazard. The hazard line is marked by that rough, so because I've landed more or less just at the top of that bank and gone in, then I can drop it sideways. And I couldn't be bothered to move the camera. Well, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Somebody doing some putting and the flag wasn't even in view. Um, I'm going to say cheerio here. You know, I do say, you know, getting to single figures, you've just got to do this, that and the other, and you're there. But it's not as easy as that. It's damned hard work. And as I say, I haven't been putting in the practice. So this round of golf feels more like six rounds with Mike Tyson than a walk in the park, to be honest. And as I'm going away in eight days, I'd better get some serious practice in. Otherwise, um, I'm going to struggle on golf courses I don't know. So, uh, wonder what the next... Sorry. I wonder what the next video will be. Kind of like uh, playing it by ear as I go along. But if there's anything you want to see that doesn't involve me driving and spending £150 on a greenfield or golf course I can't afford, then um, put some down in the comments. Bye for now.